There's this new Pentagon AI chief who wants to crack the bureaucratic inertia when it comes to some of these issues. How would you rate how modernized U.S. technology to fight some of these threats is at this moment, and how much better do you want it to be? Well, I think when we look at where we are, we're always assessing the legacy infrastructure, what we're working from, and where we're going. I think what's so critical about where the Biden administration is today is that you have leaders across the government, across agencies at DOD, the director of CISA, Jen Easterly, Chris Inglis, the national cyber director, who all appreciate the value and the need to bring technology, modern day technology into government. And there are so many efforts that have been legislated over the last year that really enforce and encourage that spending to bring that technology. We know that government can't secure the nation or industry by itself. We've got to be working together to identify the right technologies and bring them in. And we've seen a lot of efforts that are actually creating the resources and an enormous amount of money. Um, CISA has a budget now of over $2 billion with the newly appropriated funds to bring that technology in to modernize government and to keep it evolving to where the threats are. Last I heard there was 500,000 open jobs in cybersecurity. Is that for real? And what are the consequences of that, that all of those jobs aren't being filled? So I would even say that the number's more, because when really? we look- how, how much more? <laughs> well, I think when we look at cybersecurity jobs, everybody is part of the cyber workforce. Mm. And when we think about the accountability and responsibility that we have in cybersecurity, we all have that role. So I'm always hesitant to look at a specific number, because I think we've there are all these positions, but it also pigeonholes what a cyber workforce looks like. Mm. And I think we often think it's just math and science, but one of the things that we're very focused on at CISA is building out a diverse workforce, which isn't just about racial diversity, gender diversity, socioeconomic, but it's really looking at diversity of thinking and aptitudes. And I'm really excited that we're going to actually be launching um, the second neurodiversity pilot in the federal government where we're going to be bringing neurodiversity, neurodiverse individuals into the government to create a more inclusive workplace. With the ongoing war on Ukraine, how would you rate the level of cyber threats from Russia and others at this moment? Well, I think when we look at what's happened with Russia and the invasion of Ukraine, it's a marathon. We don't know where we are in the marathon, but this is a long-term battle. And I think as we see this, we have to appreciate what we've learned from this experience so far. One thing that CISA launched last August was the Joint Cyber Defense Collaborative, which is about operational collaboration with industry, where we're partnering in real time with industry. We set up Slack channels, we uh, developed a plan, we exercised the plan, and now we're working not just with our industry partners in the United States, but actually with the Ukrainian CERT, which is the Computer Emergency Response Team. They've given us information, we share that with our industry partners, and we're able to see a much better profile and threat picture than we've ever been able to see before. Some critics say that the war on Ukraine has caught the U.S. government flat-footed when it comes to cyber and that we're seeing the shifting of responsibility to the private sector. How would you respond to that? So criticism? I actually would disagree with that um, pretty strongly <laughs> because actually in November we put out something called Shields Up in anticipation of a potential invasion where we asked industry to do several things. We said lower the threshold for reporting to government. We said empower your CISOs. Look at things like multi-factor authentication. And what we've heard from industry CISOs across the board is that that was actually a very helpful tool because it gave them a heads up on not what the specific threat was going to be, but the need to create resiliency within these industry partners. There's an effort to scale up and broaden membership in the JCDC. Mm -hmm. How is that effort going? And you know, what would you like to see the role of that part of the organization be ultimately? Well, I think for those of us that have been in this space for so long, you know, the term public-private partnership lost its meaning. And so what we're seeing with operational collaboration is this real-time threat and information sharing. So when we look at building this out, we're building it out to where the threat has been. So for example, with Russia, Ukraine, we brought in uh, financial institutions. We brought in the energy sector because those are where we had greatest concerns about the threats. So I think this is one of these very deliberate, dynamic processes to bring in the right industry partners as we're moving out. So what do you think businesses still need to do that they're not doing enough of yet? So what we'd love to see, I think, is important is to institutionalize the Shields Up approach, so these efforts about lowering the threshold for reporting and being able to empower CISOs. But importantly, I think we are at a place now where we need to ensure that security is innovation, that secure innovation is the next step, where security is a differentiator. We talk a lot about baking security into products. 
that would go a long way right now. But the ability to see security as a positive effort, you know, to, if we start to see startups take on security as something that's an advantage and starting to make the business case for why to build this in, I think we'll see a lot of progress. And then I have to make a plug for multi-factor authentication. <laughs> we launched our multi-factor authentication campaign this week. We're calling it more than a password, just getting everybody to take that on. The only other piece that I'll, I'll mention is that organizations focus so much on their own security, which is critical, mm -hmm. but now we have a responsibility with the increased threat landscape to really secure the digital ecosystem, look at small businesses and other elements so that we can raise the resilience of both the public and private sector.